So before you even get started with the disclosure, consider the process used to prepare material information. Uh, you can use the existing processes within the company and adapting them where necessary. This is all around connectivity. We suggest considering how the disclosures are connected to other information in the mainstream report. Uh, this is about tying it back to tell your story and is mutually reinforcing. So strategy disclosures tell how you have elected to respond to climate risks and opportunities and metrics can tell you how you're performing in this respect, for example. So it's important to build off of the existing processes that you already have. There's a lot of tools and resources you can use to get started, one of which on your screen is CDSB's TCFD to-do list. It's a checklist you can use to start determining how to get started. In addition, it's particularly useful to develop an internal roadmap for TCFD implementation. The steps, of course, will depend upon the starting point and your organization's context. Here is an illustrative example of what this might look like. Uh, this often starts by gathering the right stakeholders internally and conducting a gap analysis of current reporting, identifying what you then need to improve on. The SSE's TCFD checklist, which can be found in the first annex of the SSE's model guidance on climate disclosure, is also a very good gap analysis tool that you can use. Once you identify those gaps, you can move through a process of capacity building, then integrating into your operations, and finally also your strategy, climate-related risks and opportunities. So a good portion of that is creating a TCFD team. In order to get a holistic picture of climate-related risks and opportunities and the impacts they bring, you should consider forming an internal working group or team to address climate change. The most successful approaches that we have seen are where these issues are tackled across the organization rather than in just in one department. We have seen a number of approaches taken by companies, uh, top down where senior leadership direct the conversation or top up where the different functions come together to develop a plan. And in either approach, you will need a climate champion. So someone who is preferably in senior leadership or even on the board, who understands the importance of this issue and can set the tone and lead on setting and improving the strategy. It's also key to get other functions and departments on board. So different professionals have expertise and perspectives that can improve the company's overall approach to climate. The real take home message here today is really to involve everyone. When you're doing that, obviously uh, you don't wanna start a bunch of new processes. It's important to leverage existing work. In many cases, companies are not starting from zero because there are existing climate-related processes or work that you can leverage. When you conduct a gap analysis of your existing exposure, um, keep in mind the different perspectives that are being used. Are you capturing climate-related data already? How can this data be used for the purpose of TCFD reporting? For example, are you conducting life cycle assessments on your products? Do you have a GHG inventory? This type of information is foundational and uh, you can build out from this to understand any future risks and opportunities throughout the value chain. Also might want to think about internal processes that are already in place. For example, does the board have a delegated sustainability or CSR committee that can include climate related risks and opportunities? Or what is your existing risk management process? Can you easily adapt this to integrate climate change into that process? It's also important to note that a lot of the other frameworks being used by companies are all mapped to the TCFD. So you can find those mappings easily through all of the organizations you're already working with. That leads us to using CDP and CDSB together. So there are specific connections between CDP disclosure and CDSB to adopt TCFD as an example. You can take a look at CDSB and CDP's building block paper, um, which is noted at the bottom of the slide here, which specifically maps this. You can also use these resources to help you, as this does not need to involve new reporting if you already follow these frameworks. What's key to emphasize here is what you're integrating from these other frameworks is really what's financially material. So a materiality analysis is really important here to make sure you're catching all of the material information from what you're already reporting on. So a first step, according to TCFD, can be setting the foundations for your TCFD disclosure. 
To start with, the TCFD has suggested starting with a certain governance and risk management disclosures. While the TCFD is ultimately a, a full disclosure framework, it also highlights that there are necessary internal processes that need to be adapted. And it also suggests a phased approach that may take up to five years to get to full implementation. Governance structures and risk management processes can be used to incorporate climate into internal decision making and should therefore be thought of right from the beginning. Although we don't expect companies to give point by point or granular demonstration of how climate risks are governed, it is expected, at least at the beginning, an outline and summary of the board's oversight, management roles, and the processes used to identify, assess, and manage climate risks related to finance. Interestingly, uh, the TCFD set out the foundation for good TCFD disclosure as these particular areas. They acknowledge this information provides the context in which financial and operating results are achieved. Once you have that foundation set, in phase two, companies can enhance disclosure by identifying what risks and opportunities they have already identified as being financial to the company and how they affect the business. And along with this, you can introduce metrics and targets used to monitor climate-related activities. So while governance was a key factor in phase one, here companies can go deeper by determining how major capital expenditures may be impacted by climate-related factors and it's also the moment to enhance the integration of cl climate-related risks and opportunities into the strategy um, and introducing these metrics and targets, such as starting with scope one and two GHG emissions and setting key performance indicators related to your emissions. And then finally, in phase three, you can look to further enhancements and adding strategy resilience. So this is recognized by TCFD as being a very challenging area for companies and therefore uh, one that can be looked at um, once you have the foundation and the initial enhancements in place. All final considerations should be brought in at this phase, which includes all four categories, um, governance, strategy, risk management, and metrics and targets. But what I'd like to highlight here is the scenario analysis use. We identified this as something that would help you early on. And while at the beginning, you might initially look at scenario analyses to help you identify how resilient your company might be at this phase, we recommend using multiple scenarios and reporting on all of those scenarios you're using and how you're analyzing your company's resilience. So just take a moment now to reflect on what we've discussed and think about your own organization. So what key action will you take next to progress climate disclosure in your organization? You may want to establish a TCFD team internally. You might want to conduct a gap analysis of existing reporting. You might want to develop a roadmap for TCFD adoption, or maybe, and maybe all of these, establish internal climate governance. So just take a moment to think about what you think your first step is, and then we'll go into a reflection exercise. Great, I hope you uh, found a starting point for your organization. There's no right or wrong answer here. Whatever you choose is a great way to start your disclosure. Now let's reflect a bit deeper on that in our reflection exercise today. Take a moment to review your own company's disclosure practices. Determine what phase of the three phases of the TCFD's plan you believe your company is currently at. If you want to dig deeper, you can find these three phases on page 33 of the TCFD's 2020 status report. Take a look at those phases on the recommended disclosures under each and consider what gaps exist in your company's current climate related disclosures. What steps should be taken internally to improve those disclosures? You might wanna pause this video and take a moment to think that through and we'll go through a few common questions and challenges that you might come across. So as you took a little reflection through your own company's disclosure, there's a few challenges or common questions that likely came up. If your company was at phase one or the foundation phase, it's often asked when and who reviews climate related issues or how does the management and the board role differ. So these are things that you should be discussing with your company and determining how best you want to locate governance on climate related disclosure. Under risk management in phase one, it's helpful and a good reminder to have a visual diagram of the organizational structure. This might help you yourselves, as well as the users of the report, to understand where exactly the risks and the management of those risks are sat within your organization. 
If your company is in phase two and it's working more on enhancement, questions you might wanna be asking yourself is, uh, how do you evaluate the climate impact on capital expenditure? Or you might be wondering, how do you start calculating GHG emissions? Luckily, the TCFD um, guidance in full gives you clear guidance on this. We'll also be working on that in further modules. When you're looking at strategy in phase two, it's important to assess the financial impact of climate on your business sector as well as region. In phase three, you'll be looking a bit deeper into metrics and targets. So you'll start to be wondering how to measure scope three emissions. And you'll also be looking at how do you set climate related targets. A lot of these examples can also be given in the TCFD hub. And you can find case studies there as well that'll help guide you on how other participants in your sector are doing this. And then in the strategy, you should be initiating a scenario analysis. So trying to decide which scenario analysis to use or whether you want to adapt scenarios for um, your own specific situation. And then also finding a way to quantify financial impacts connected to risks and opportunities will be a big challenge here. Luckily, these are questions that all companies are asking. So there's a number of resources available to help you with that. And our next section will go further into that for you.